World building and coding for kids. The latest from Bitsbox is our text donation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from Bitsbox is co-founder Aiden Chopra. Great to see you, Aiden. Hi, Fred. Nice to be here. Thanks. Well, before we get into what's brand new here, uh, a little background about Bitsbox. You've been at this for a while. Yeah, absolutely. We um, we both we met my co-founder Scott Leininger and I met at Google when we were working on another product. And uh, then we moved to another company. And one day he came to me and said, I'm quitting. And I went, oh, no, you're one of our best developers. And he said, but I've developed this prototype of a system that teaches kids to code. And you have made a career out of teaching, you know, lay people hard technical things, uh, in that case, 3D modeling. Why don't you come join me and we'll, we'll do this thing together. And that was about eight years ago. Uh, that laid the foundation for Bitsbox. And since then, we've been teaching hundreds of thousands or even millions, depending on how you count, uh, of kids all over the world how to do computer science. So describe for us a little more fully of what Bitsbox is. Absolutely. So Bitsbox is um, primarily a subscription box. So that's how we got our start. So if you would like uh, your son or your daughter or your niece, your nephew, your grandkid, somebody like that, uh, to learn something about coding, to be a global citizen in the truest sense for the future, um, you can sign up for Bitsbox and we'll start sending physical materials, beautiful printed stuff, um, projects basically, that they can do to build apps on the Bitsbox website. And those apps are coded in a programming language called JavaScript, which is super ubiquitous, but with a small library of commands that makes it really approachable for kids as young as six. So uh, it's a sequence. Everybody starts with coordinates and then they go to variables and conditional statements and so on and so on. And the longer they stay with the subscription, the more they learn, the more sophisticated the apps that they are, uh, that they can build. And the apps that they build can actually be used on any device, their computer that they built them on, but they can also really easily share them out to phones and tablets and anything else with a browser and internet connection. And now comes something that's called Blueprint. Uh -huh. You don't have to memorize that. It's on your shirt. So yep. <laughs> tell us, what right. is Blueprint? So Blueprint is sort of the evolution of Bitsbox. Um, what we've learned in about eight years of teaching kids to code is that it is completely possible. Kids are fully capable of doing this, not only learning to code to program computers, uh, but doing it with real typed JavaScript. Um, one other thing we've learned, though, is that motivation is a big part. You know, there are probably 10 to 15 percent of kids who are internally motivated to learn to code. Uh, if you want to get more kids than that, and that's always been our mission, then you have to work on not just the how do they do it, right? What's the system? What's the programming language? What are the projects? you got to work on the why, which is why should I code? And we've looked and we've seen millions, hundreds of millions of kids using programs like Minecraft specifically, to some extent playing Roblox and really getting engaged in these 3D worlds that are in some ways the precursor to this metaverse idea that everybody's talking about. And we thought, what if you could more easily learn to code within the context of something like Minecraft? Minecraft has coding but it was kind of an afterthought for them. What if you could make it one click away, you make it integral to the experience, and you think about safety and security and privacy first, instead of trying to bolt those on kind of after the horse is already out of the barn. So Blueprint is an online playground, basically a website for kids sort of eight to 14 years old, where they build 3D worlds just like they do in Minecraft, but then they also use code to bring them to life and they do it in a social environment with their friends and only their friends. There's no strangers, emphasis on privacy and safety um, and also on creativity and making things and bringing their dreams to life. And how many friends can be involved uh, in this at, at any one time? Well, Blueprint is entirely browser-based. So we're using some really, really cutting edge technology to make it possible to go peer to peer with these video and audio connections that allow not only um, their avatars to be playing together and coding together and building together in these worlds that they create, but they also have a live video and audio connection if they want, just like we have here. And right now, it looks like the limits of the technology are probably four or five people simultaneously, depending on the speed of their internet connection and the sort of capability of the hardware they're using. That hardware um, can be anything from a MacBook like I'm using, uh, right down to a Chromebook that's basically just a shell for a browser that's running. But internet connection, modern browser, 
relatively modern hardware, nothing to install, nothing to download. It's really interesting. So tell me about your thoughts when it comes to the proliferation of all these STEM and STEAM toys and uh, other things that, that, that are out there today that profess to teach kids, uh, get them into coding. Uh, some, I guess, uh, really do it and some maybe not so much. Right. So tell me what your thoughts are. Um, try to be, uh, I'll try to be diplomatic. So it's, there's actually a term in our industry called STEM washing. <laughs> <laughs> sort of like there used to be greenwashing, you know, you could sort of paint something green and people thought it was eco and fine. Now there's a certain, honestly, amount of stem washing. People who create anything that basically isn't, I don't know, a shirt is stem in some way because it involves creativity. And the truth is that most toys do involve building or creativity or imagination. And those are really important parts of stem. Um, but stem stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And uh, there are some really terrific products out there that really encourage kids to push the limits of those disciplines while they're playing as well. In general, uh, the future depends on having a really wide, varied cohort of people who know how to bring the technology to life. Uh, if only a small group of people who look just the way you think they're going to look are responsible for building the technology of the future, you end up with things honestly, like Facebook, right? Facebook is what happens when a social network is built by a very small demographic of people. Um, we are all, all of us who are trying to get kids into STEM and into technology are just trying to broaden the reach. Let's get more girls, more women. Let's get more people of color from underrepresented communities. Let's just get more people coding so that the future of technology um, is as broad and welcoming and accepting and as positive as it possibly can be. Does that make sense? Sure. So how do you do it? How do you go about making this uh, ubiquitous, available to, to all and, and getting not beyond that, attracting the interest? Well, there are some kids who are inherently interested in robots. And so the kids who are interested in robots will be excited about learning to code by means of programming a robot. And most of the STEM toys that are out there are robots of one kind or another. I, I think I would argue, and we, a lot of us would argue that, that this is getting back to what I said about the why and not the how. There is a sliver of kids who are motivated by robots. Great, let's teach them to code with robots. There's another chunk of kids who are motivated to code by coding apps, like greeting cards and messages and puzzles and games and things like that. That's what they do with Bitsbox right now, but that's a chunk. Um, there are other kids who are motivated to learn to code by coding music or videos or things like that, and that's great. I think the way to get more and more people and kinds of people involved is to really work on the whys, to work on the motivation. Why would a kid want to learn to code? And Blueprint is saying, you know what? Minecraft is practically ubiquitous right now, and it doesn't just appeal to boys, it appeals to boys and girls alike. And it doesn't tend to just appeal to kids who are really into science fiction and robots and fantasy. It tends to appeal to a really broad swath of kids, which is really cool. So if you take something that's thematically like that and then add other themes like animals, pet care, car racing, um, you know, fantasy, cops and robbers, all kinds of different themes, then maybe you can start to address the why that gets a larger larger, sorry, and larger chunk of, uh, of the population interested in doing this. It's, it's not about how to teach kids to code anymore. There's more ways to teach kids to code than there have ever been. It's about why should they code? And Blueprint is really just a step in the, maybe this is something that'll get another 10, 15, 40, 50% of the population interested in doing this. Terrific. So how can people learn more about it and, and, and back it and and acquire it. Absolutely. So the easiest way to learn about Blueprint is to just go to bitsbox.com. That's B-I-T-S-B-O-X.com right there. Um, there's a big banner that goes to the Blueprint backer page uh, right there. You can go there and learn all about Blueprint. You can back it on Kickstarter, or you can just sign up to get updates to join the beta list when it's ready. Uh, and that's how you'll stay all informed about Blueprint. We're really aiming for this summer, probably June, to have a big public beta where everybody can try it out for free. And beyond that, what will the pricing be? I mean, parents would want to know, you know we've, got a, we've got 
25 subscriptions in the household for different yeah, absolutely. things. Absolutely. Well, um, that's interesting because Bitsbox is a subscription, right? Because you get physical stuff in the mail. So Bitsbox averages about $30 a month. We would love for Blueprint to be much more affordable than that. I mean, $30 a month is accessible to a certain swath of the population. But again, we're trying to do something that actually reaches even more kids. So we're trying something different with Blueprint. Instead of it being a monthly subscription where you get a whole bunch of learning materials in the mail, Blueprint is going to be, we think, free for anyone to use. You can make an account, you can have as many worlds as you want, you can play with your friends. What we're gonna do is have a built-in content store and a built-in currency. And you can use that built-in currency. This isn't an NFT play at all. The idea is if you're building a world where you're farming unicorns and you want a beautiful unicorn stable, you could absolutely build one, but you could take a shortcut and pay us a couple of bucks and download one from the library and use that in your world that you play with your friends in. So we're not exactly sure if that's gonna work, but we actually feel like it's a lot more affordable and a lot more accessible to more kids. There's also the option to build what you need instead of buying it. And eventually we hope to make a system where kids are actually able to make content, publish it and get paid for it from other kids. Sort of like a Roblox model in a, in a way, I think, in, in some ways. Yeah, I mean, sort of like a Roblox model, except that Roblox currently, as far as we can tell, makes most of their money by selling items to kids so that those kids can do better in the games that they're playing, if that makes sense, right? So if I get dropped into a game as a kid and I want to win, then I might be offered a weapon or a tool or something like that so I can do better in the game. And so there's an incentive to buy that weapon or something. Um, that's what Roblox does. And frankly, that doesn't really interest us. We're building Blueprint which is inherently different. It's a tool for creating online worlds and experiences and games that you play with your friends. So rather than selling you a gun so you can play a game where you shoot strangers, we would rather sell you a house for your unicorns that you can use in the game you're building that you can play with your friends. So it's instead of buying an item to play a game, it's buying an item to build a game that you can use to play with the people you know. Does that, does that sort of jive? Absolutely. The, the website, once again, is bitsbox.com, mm -hmm. B-I-T-S-B-O-X.com. Yep. Aiden Chopra, thank you for taking the time with us. Thank you so much, Fred. Have a great day.